hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at a Pokemon that a lot of people actually wanted to see for whatever reason. It's going to be Ninjask. This Pokemon is um, now a little bit buffed with Aerial Ace, of course, but also learned Shadow Ball, which can uh, um, set it apart from other Flying Plus Bug type Pokemon, for example, the uh, um, Ladian or also the Scyther. Giving it very good matchups against, for example, something like the Deoxys defense as well, plus also the Medicham. So we're basically trying to counter exactly those Pokemon. We are very glassy though, but yeah, you wanted to see it, so here we're gonna have it. I made a post on the YouTube community tab to ask what you want to see. And also, if you're not part of the community, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to the channel. Would appreciate it, would help out quite a bit. Also, at recommending the, uh, the content here, of course, as you're going to now have the matchup of our oh, Shadow Steelix, which you're going to have in the back, um, against the Sableye. Shadow Steelix is actually such a strong Pokemon. This Pokemon was definitely the best of them all. It's like so broken to be fair to play with this one, but here we're going to encounter the Venusaur. Maybe we can still do something in the this first game with our good friend the uh, um yeah ninjas here ninjas going to be able to go for fury cutter which is really cool basically the best bug type fast move still I feel like there should be some better bug type fast moves than what is currently available. But we're going to be able to get to another charge move, allowing us to get the final shit from the opponent, getting them low. And also, we're just rooming around here. Sludge Bomb going to easily get the knockout against us, but Licky Tang going to be able to clean up this match here. We can take a move for sure, and Body Slam is coming through afterwards. So, yeah, we're going to have a lot of bulk in the back line, of course, because our lead is insanely squishy. We kind of are forced to. Our lead basically mainly beats something like the Medicham, mainly beats something like the Deoxys Defense. So we're going to try to bait those out if we lose the lead with our say swap of the Lickitung. But um, also, you're going to see for this team that there's going to be a Greninja in the back. There's also a tried in the beginning for it. There are some games, I guess, still in there with Greninja in the back. But I felt like it was a little bit too squishy. So later on, I decided to bring back the Shadow Steelix, which you saw already in the first battle. It's kind of randomized. So um, if you're wondering if there's some, maybe there are even some more games with Greninja in there. But definitely Shadow Steelix worked out a little bit better. I wanted to go for Greninja first because, um, actually because of Steelix, to have an actual answer for Steelix. But I was just hoping with a team then with Steelix, I don't encounter Steelix too often because, yeah, like the team otherwise will not be as great. Here, Greninja are going to be able to go up against the Diogong Slots to take a charge move, which we might want to shield up. We do not. It's going to be the drill run. And we can still go for at least a few more fast moves here. Going for the Night Sash against the opponent, going to allow us to knock them out for sure. If they want to shield, they still have to shield another one and they don't want to do this. As so we're going to get out now the Lantern in the back. And we can try to still maybe hit the Lantern for a lot of damage with the Shadow Ball here. Shadow Ball comes through. Going to do some decent amount of damage as we can go for the Aerial Ace still, and maybe can get a shield advantage, or like another shield here that would be amazing. They're actually going to use a shield here, which I didn't expect. I can go for the Night Slash. They go for another fast move. Does this do enough damage to knock them out? It does. And now we can still try to go for two Night Slashes. If we boost here, we still have a chance of winning this game. Let's see if Greninja is going to be able to pull it off and... Yeah, we're going to still get to another move, but sadly, it's not going to be enough, and we're going to lose this game with two shields, but there was nothing that I really wanted to shield anyway, so that's kind of awkward. Yeah, next game, we're going to have, again, now the Steelix in the back and a Greninja in the lead. We're going to do super effective damage with our fast move, and as you can see, we are going to be able to win this matchup in the two shield scenario just by our fast move damage alone, at least it kind of looks like it. Now we're going to get out the Azumarill. I decided to build up a ton of energy and then decided to go into my Licky Tongue, allowing me to basically use this as a sponge for the energy as I kind of want to keep my other shield at least still for my ninjas for later on. But as you're going to see, the opponent going to decide to go for another play rough here. We can just go for the body step maybe as a bait first, expecting that the opponent going to use a shield here. Let's see if they're going to do exactly this. They do exactly this, allowing me now to go for a power whip, which is going to be amazing as this is going to do a ton of damage or get the shield from the opponent. Now I'm going to let this move go through because another charge move or even the fast move would be enough to knock me out. So I have to go into my ninjas and I can go for a shadow ball now. This Shadow Ball is going to chunk quite a bit from the opponent's health. Not going to get the knockout, but the Greninja is coming back in. And sadly, they're going to get a free fast move in here. Not the right timing from my fast move. And they survive with a 1 HP there. I could have stayed in and tried to knock them out just with my 1 um, yeah, fast move from the uh, ninja -esque, but sadly, we were not able to do this. The opponent swaps out into the Deoxys. This is going to be an interesting matchup, as Deoxys charge moves are all resisted by the Steelix, allowing us to do some decent damage here, chunking away from the health with our charge move as well, with breaking swipe. As we will see here, I can just go for another one. The opponent most likely going to swap eventually into the Azumarill, which they do right now, and I have to hope that I can farm them all the way down, and I can, and I still have an Aerial A stored, which should be enough to knock out the opponent's Deoxys. Indeed. Actually comes in clutch 
and does a ton of damage in this matchup, which is absolutely right. Basically, nearly won the game alone there. Next opponent, we're going to have the Vigoroth in the lead. We're going to get to the move at the same time as the opponent, so I showed maybe went straight for it, but the opponent decides to go straight for their body stem. I can take one, and I double resist the counter, which is going to be amazing for this matchup, as I'm going to be able to win this in the zero shield scenario, I would imagine, but they decide to use a shield here, so I'm going to go ahead and go for my own charge move. And next, they're going to let this move go through, and I can let this move go through as well if I want to, but I don't want to. I'm going to use a shield, trying to get some extra energy, and the opponent decides to swap into a weekly tough. This is not ideal for me, but definitely on the Steelix, a better matchup compared to the um, yeah, Licky Tongue in the back, because Licky Tongue, the lick damage is just not really adding up, and here we at least resist the fast move from the opponent. And I'm going to use still a shield here to try to get to another Earthquake, which should work out fairly well for us. So we can still win this one, at least in neutral shields, which is amazing for me, as this move is going to be enough to knock out the opponent, and let's see what's coming in next. We're gonna see the opponent swapping into their Vigoroth again, trying to get the farm down, which we can get here, but they're going to have a Medicham in the back, and now it really depends if we can still win this game. It's going to be a close one. I can go for a Body Slam. Usually, Licky Tongue can win this one in the Zero Shield, but it depends on the moveset. Do they run the Dynamic Punch? This would be a, like really bad for me if they run Dynamic Punch here. They're running Psychic, so I should be able to reach another body slam in time and I will be able to do exactly that finishing off the opponent's mage champ and winning us the game with three Pokemon left with our ninjask in the lead. Next opponent, we're going to have the Lantern in the back, which is good, or like in the lead here against us, which of course is really bad for me, and I will try to go for a power whip, but the opponent decides to swap into their superior first. We're going to go into this matchup with around 50 energy as a lead here, which is amazing for me, as the opponent decides to use a shield immediately. Honestly, I kind of want to make a series about um, maybe the next time when Greatly comes back afterwards, where I play a meta Pokemon with the wrong moveset or like with like an unusual moveset for example like dynamic punch mage champ which is a little bit more common but it is um, not really what you would um, see all the time psychic is still way more common or the hyper beam variant of licky tongue or the flash cannon variant of the reggie steel like moves at you they are still decent and not like just for content but um a little bit more off meta than you would expect at least for example i feel like that um, flash kitten on the registry has actually a lot of potential right now in the meta where gliger is one of the most common pokemon to face and um also hyper beam i feel like on licky tongue makes a lot of sense plus dynamic punch also makes a lot of sense so look there are a lot of teams that you can build with like different kind of movesets that are not the standard one, which I feel like could throw some people off guard. But yeah, let's take a look at the next opponent with the Venusaur. We still should be able to survive this one because of the debuff. And we can swap out into our ninjas, trying to go for the aerial ace. And I will get the knockout against the opponent's Venusaur here. I try to undercharge so I get more energy. But sadly, this was not enough. And now I have to still try to get to the earthquake, which does not work out. And this was definitely... I should have definitely undercharged more against the Venusaur. This was definitely not ideal for me, as I needed too many fast moves still to get to, to an earthquake with my Steelix. But we can still move on into the next game. Having the ninjas against the Talonflame. Definitely equal flying type Pokemon here, right? Little bit of an awkward one because it's exactly the Pokemon that I don't want to face, but we're gonna now encounter the Medicham. Also Pokemon that I don't really want to face, but at least I can still keep all my shields for later on because I need to. I have to align my Steelix against the opponent's Talonflame. Talonflame is definitely a Pokemon that I didn't want to face with this team at all. Like literally is not meant to face this Pokemon. It's fairly rare in the Great League nowadays. Charizard basically took its place. But it kind of comes back now for obvious reasons. Because there are just a lot of Pokemon that are weak to fire timing as like also the fast move. So it does make a lot of sense. But here as you can see we can go for a Shadow Ball with our Ninjask if I want to. Or for two Aerial Aces. But at the end of the day, we're just going to give the opponent a ton of farm, which is not ideal either. I can still try to get to another move here and try to get a shield. But I have to try to swap out now into my Steelix, and I have no idea why I did Okay, I did it like later on then. But I have to let the first move go through, because I know that the opponent going to get to the next move in time. Or they actually are at the next move already. Um, forcing me to try to get the knockout here, but sadly they're running the Swampert in the back. Still I can go for a charge move here, but it's not looking good for me, as this is not going to get the knockout against the opponent. They can go for the Hydro Cannon, which of course is going to get the knockout against us. And as you're going to see, I can still try to go for an Aerial Ace, which is going to knock them out, but what am I supposed to do with Double Resisted Fury Cutter against the Talon Flame? Not that much, I would say. So, again, not really ideal, but also what I have to say though, 
I did not get the ninjas really on the matchups that you want to have them in. Like there are a few matchups that you really dominate and like, I have not really faced too many Medi champs in the lead or at all. I don't think I really aligned my ninjas perfectly like in zero NRG disadvantage or anything like this against the Medi champ yet. So it's a little bit awkward. It's it's definitely not really easy in terms of the Pokemon that we are encountering right now, but yeah, we're going to be able to use a shield against the Earthquake from the opponent's Galarian Stunfisk, which is kind of nice as they can go for another one immediately afterwards, which is going to get us low enough that they can go for another one and knock me out afterwards, but I can still go for a Power Whip. This will get the shield from the opponent, which is not ideal for me, as I don't really have the best answers for them. I can go for another body slam here, trying to get them low enough that I can just let this move go through. And honestly, I make a huge mistake here. I should have not done what I did here. I could just go into my Steelix and farm them all the way down with Dragon Tail. Instead, I decide to just sacrifice my... Um, yeah, ninjas there, which does not really make too much sense in my opinion, so that's kind of bad for me. Where the ball comes through, I have to try to farm them all the way down, but they have too much energy anyway, and this Pelipa is going to be my nightmare anyway. Going to be able to basically break the team, because, like, yeah, I have a weakness to water and flying type Pokemon with this, but you're not going to find a team that doesn't have a weakness with ninjas in it, so... Honestly, if you think about it, flying plus um, the... Bug typing is really, really bad defensively as you're going to have weaknesses against fire, rock, ice, electric, literally nearly everything. So yeah, it's even against flying yourself. So yeah, it's not really a great type combination in general, especially as we don't really see too many great um, bug type moves. So like you cannot really do step move damage anyway. Like the best bug type move is most likely lunge, which is only really available to like certain Pokemon. Honestly, bug typing just needs a buff, like needs new moves, like needs U-turn as a fast move, which really would be cool. Like U-turn being a Volt Switch clone would be so amazing. But no, like bug typing is still kind of in a spot where you don't really want to be in. Really hope that Niantic does something for it, because the U-turn is something that we need to have for Pokemon Go, in my opinion. Just to also get another four-turn move, just to have like something interesting. Basically, the U-turn, if you didn't know, is a clone of... Um, the, uh, yeah, Volt Switch, basically. It's the same move, basically, in the main series games. One is physical, one is special. Newton is a physical move. But here we're gonna see the Shadow Ball at least land against the Sand Slash on the back. I can still go for a breaking swipe against them. And this should get the knockout against them here, as we can still go up against the opponent's Swampert, use a shield onto the Hydro Cannon, and we can still move on and go for another breaking swipe against them, trying to get the knockout here. But let's see if we can still win this final game. I hope that we can, but we will find out shortly as we can still use another shield against the Hydro Cannon and I'm still gonna outspeed them. Breaking Swipe Steelix is just so strong and this is going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to leave a like and I'll see you then. Bye bye.